Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. Happy Monday, I guess. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning and I had a great weekend. Uh, I'm ready to get back to work today. Uh, should be an interesting week. Um, hope so anyway. Uh, lots of uh, some new things going on. And um, anyway, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope and pray you're all doing well. Um, my name is, if this is the first time you're seeing this, my name is John Guru. I'm from Joy Lutheran Church in Richmond, Texas. Uh, I started doing this uh, when the pandemic started around March and I just kind of kept going. I read from the Revised Common Lectionary, and uh, at the bottom of the video, in the comment section, there's going to be, I'll have some links up there to link to our website and a link to where you can get the Revised Common Lectionary and your daily readings. Uh, some people do like to follow along and see where I get it. Um, and also, uh, the prayer of the day, I read from the, the uh, Pray Now app, and that's from Concordia Publishing, and there will also be a link at the bottom where you can get that. Uh, so anyway, today, um, oh, also, before, you, before we get started, uh, I'm, I've said it before, I'm putting together a little map of little pinpoints to, of cities and stuff where people say they're from. So if you don't mind, drop me a comment. Let me know what city you're from, maybe what church you go to. Uh, we've had some people from the Baptist Church and mostly Lutheran. Uh, I'm, I'm Joy Lutheran Church, but uh, all are certainly welcome. Um, but uh, I, I'm putting together a little pinpoint thing to show my daughters just how far something can go when you post on social media and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to have a map and I'll have a little pinpoint thing. Maybe I'll have it on my iPad. I don't, I don't know. And I can pinpoint and stuff. So, hey, let me know where you're from. So anyway, <clears throat> let's get going. Uh, today, uh, the readings, we have uh, reading from the Psalms, of course. And then we're going to go to Second Kings. And then we're going to go to Acts. So let me get a little bit of coffee here. Oh, so here we go. Psalm 102, verses 12 through 28. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. So here we go. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. <clears throat> you will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to, to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear and have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the, he regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. <clears throat> Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord that he looked down from his holy height from, from heaven, the Lord looked at earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. O oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. <clears throat> All right. The Old Testament lesson. We're going to go uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 17. And then we're going to go th uh, 32 through 37. So here we go. One day... Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, 
Behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Excuse me. So that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he sat and he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. Uh, what is to be done for you? Would you have, have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time the following spring. And Elisha, uh, as Elisha had said to her, now skipping over to uh, 32 through 37. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So when he, when he went in and shut the door be behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord, then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he stretched himself out, stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. And he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her. And when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. All right. All right. Now, uh, on to the New Testament. We're going to Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. So. Now, at Iconium, they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their mind against the brothers. So they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. When an, when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia and the surrounding country. And, they were con and, they, and, bleh, and there they continued to preach the gospel. All right. This is the word of the Lord. All right, let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day today. Perhaps you can enjoy some coffee. So anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, so with that, uh, be safe, be happy, be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee and the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.